being, uh, let's say, uh, new, I can separate culture from religion and do my best to follow uh, the religion because the culture is not mine. So no matter which group I find myself with, whatever culture they practice is not my culture. So I would try my best to focus on the religious aspect of things. And in many ways, I did achieve that. In some of the ways that I believe I achieved uh, separating culture from religion would be like how to do the prayer, how to do wudu, how to uh, recite uh, the Quran. Some groups, they might have a certain accent and others may uh, say that this is the way that it was originally uh, intended. So I, I was able to understand that within certain groups, they would have some sort of difference compared to the other group. So these are some of my, some of my uh, small examples. I followed the path of uh, al -Bayt mainly because I was introduced to it from the very beginning. I did not know anything about Sunni Shia when I said the Shahada. And Alhamdulillah, when I did say the Shahada, it was among brothers and sisters who were Shia. And afterwards I began to read about the differences be between the Sunnis and the Shias. I come to understand that um, so many things happen in the past. And the, these things that happened in the past led us to the path that we are in today. So Alhamdulillah, I still maintain uh, my identity with uh, Shia Islam. And I do believe that this is the, uh, the way to be. Uh, the personality I, I feel more connection to in, in regards to the Imams would be Imam Hassan. I found him to be intelligent. I found him to be uh, a strong man. I found him to be, um, uh, how can I say, inspiring. He inspired me. This is not to say that all the other Imams, for example, his father, Imam Ali, alayhi salam, uh, is any less than him, or Imam Zaman, alayhi salam, is any less than him. But for me, he is uh, one of the most inspiring figures in, uh, among the, the Imams. I attempted to go for Hajj uh, twice, and in both cases it didn't work out. I had gathered the money, my passports, and so forth. But, alhamdulillah, no visa. So no visa, no uh, permission to go. So that has passed. As far as Ziara is, is concerned, I've never made the attempt at, uh, for uh, Ziara. Inshallah, I might do that uh, one day soon. But uh, at that time, I focus on what was uh, more important, which was the, uh, the Hajj. Because at that time, uh, price-wise, it was almost the same. So I focus on doing the wajib, and we'll see, inshallah, what, what uh, the decision will be. I did not struggle with the concept, concept of uh, intercession, mainly because it's written in the Quran, and mainly because uh, there's no culture involved in that. It's straightforward uh, religious. I understand that um, certain groups among the uh, Sunni groups, they may say that it's not uh, permitted to, to consider that. But uh, what I understand from the path of al -Bayt, it is uh, a necessary part of uh, the future. My first Maharam was with the Pakistani group and the uh, Iraqi group and with the uh, Lebanese group. So I visited the centers and I tr did my best to participate to understand what was happening and what the meaning of uh, Muharram and uh, Ashura was all about. And what I understood was that 
um, Imam Hussein, he stood for the true Islam and the army against him stood for anything other than Islam. So I learned a lot about um, uh, standing up for rights, standing up for justice, standing up for the truth uh, during the month of Muharram. Uh, one main lesson that uh, the, uh, the month of Muharram and Ashura inspired in me was that it's important to have a good ending in life. And one of the most inspiring figures uh, <clears throat> at that time uh, would be Muslim bin Akil. He was the ambassador to Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, and he was a very good ambassador in my opinion. And the, the most inspiring thing about him was on the day that he got killed, his last words were, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadan Rasulullah. So it's very, very important that someone has a very good ending in life rather than have a, have a very good uh, beginning, but they die in a bad way. Uh, I believe that the uh, Muslim community, um, I, I don't know if they're doing a good job, but I cannot say they're doing a bad job uh, spreading the message of uh, Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. Um, the population of Muslims appear to be increasing. This is what the media is saying. And, and this is on a global uh, perspective. So in this way, the message is getting to the people that um, Islam is uh, the truth and the path of uh, al-bayt, Allahumma sallam, Muhammadin Ali Muhammad, is also the, the right way to go. Um, can they do more? I suppose there's always room for improvement, but I cannot make an expert comment on this because I do not know enough about the topic. Um, the way I think to, to raise more uh, awareness about the importance of Imam Hussein and the tragedy of Karbala is to have more unity among the Sh Shia group. The Sunnis, they appear to be having their unity. But I think among the Shia group, um, there appear to be so many differences among the cultural basis. For example, on a Thursday night, if you were to go to a center, you'll mainly find, um, let's say in one center, a certain tongue being spoken rather than a, a common tongue. So I think if we want to, uh, to, to, to expand and to spread the message more, I think if the Shia group was to come together more, it would be of uh, benefit. For someone who's interested in Islam and who would like to know, to know more about Islam, I recommend the same path I took which is begin by reading the Quran. I read, I believe, more than 50% of the book, of the Holy Quran, before I ask myself the question, do I believe what I'm reading to be true? So um, I, rec I, re I recommend this to be the first step. And if God Almighty cannot uh, touch your heart with his words, then most likely uh, uh, there's almost nothing else that will touch your heart. So this is my major recommendation. Um, I, do, I recommend to the Ummah, Muslims, uh, Shia, Sunni, to take uh, importance of these things. And number one, take care of your prayers, especially to do your prayers on time. Um, don't do like I did when I started off in Islam, which was uh, do your prayers after. Because sometimes you're at work and you, yes, it, it, it is a busy time, but I didn't understand uh, the importance of prayers at that time. And I recommend that people do take care of their prayers, especially to do them on time. Uh, number two would be to make sure you have a will. 
if you owe anyone even a penny, it's important that you write a will because on the Day of Judgment, if you come owing a penny to someone, uh, God Almighty will insist that you repay that person. And if you're unable to, well, of course, you will be unable to repay. And what I understand is the currency on the Day of Judgment is deeds. And people will be taking your good deeds. And if you have no good deeds, then they'll be transferring their bad deeds to you. So I do recommend that you write a will and that you include in your will all your debts so that after you've passed away, if you have any, uh, if you have money and uh, valuables, they can go towards clearing your debts. So if you owe a penny, include it in your will. If you have a mortgage, if you borrowed a book, please include these things in your will. Uh, also, this one is quite, uh, quite important. Uh, take care of your parents. Someone like me who was uh, born Christian, um, Islam does not uh, permit that, if, let's say your parents was to pass away, that you forget about your parents. It's very important that you still continue to be a good son or be a good uh, daughter to your parents. This means that if your parents pass, pass away, at least you uh, uh, do dua on their behalf or do good deeds on their behalf. And if your parents are still alive, that you continue to support them and that you continue to be a good son or a good daughter towards your parents is very important. And this is one of the things that's written in the Quran from the point of view that God Almighty is saying that um, be good to your parents. And number four, I, I know there's many more I, I can add, but I'll simply stop at this. And it is to learn how to recite the Quran in Arabic. During the month of uh, Ramadan, I believe the, uh, I believe what is said concerning recitation is, if, you recite, if you're able to recite one word, it's as if you recited the entire Quran. So if you were to get yourself a teacher or go on YouTube or I don't know how you can do it, but work it out somehow that you're able to uh, recite the Quran in Arabic. I think it will be very beneficial to, to you in this life and also in the hereafter.